Hey everyone, welcome back. Uh, so in today's video, I'm gonna be showing you how to read and write Parquet files using MuleSaw. So before I jump into the demo, um, it might be good to give you a quick primer uh, for those that aren't familiar with Parquet and, and what that format is like. So instead of storing data in a, in a row-oriented format, like in a CSV file, you actually store it in a column-oriented format. And you can see that over here on the left. And as a result of storing it in this specific format for a Parquet file, there are significant data storage size savings. So you can see in the table on the right, this is from Databricks. When you store, when you take data that in a CSV file and transform that into a Parquet format file, you can see it goes from one terabyte down to 130 gigabytes. Um, query times are, are, are dropped significantly, and then also cost savings, you know, in terms of storage and, you know, accessing that data. So Parquet is, is, a, is a special format. It's part of the Apache Hadoop um, uh, ecosystem, um, but it's just a way to store data in a specific storage format, all right? Okay, so before we switch over to AnyPoint Studio, it'll be good to kind of show you where you can get some of this code as well as the, the community connector. Uh, again, this connector is not offered by MuleSoft. This is a connector that I created for proof of concept, but it shows you how you can actually leverage the Mule SDK, create a connector that can actually read and write a Parquet file um, using the platform. And then also, if you search for Parquet within my, on my GitHub account, you can also find the example project that I'm gonna be showing you within Studio as well. Um, for the Parquet connector, um, it provides two different operations. So you have the ability to read a Parquet file and you need to pass it the file location and this has to be in a local file system. And once you grab that file, it's gonna go ahead, parse it um, into a JSON format. And then in order to write in a Parquet file with the, with the connector, you actually need to convert the data into Avro format before the connector can actually take that uh, data and, and create a, a Parquet file. And this is a limitation that is, is part of the SDK um, in terms of what that data format needs to look like before it actually creates it. And the, the, the reason behind it also is that it needs the schema in order for it to understand how to create that Parquet file. All right. Okay, so to set up the uh, Parquet connector within Studio, what you first need to do is go ahead and clone this repo from GitHub. So you're gonna go ahead and either download the zip um, or you know open it with GitHub Desktop. And then within that directory, once you unpackage it, you're gonna run a Maven clean install. And this is gonna package up that connector and then add it into your Maven repository locally. Once it's in your Maven repository, you're gonna go ahead and add this snippet into your POM file. And uh, you can do 1.0.7 as well. Actually, I think that's the latest and greatest version of this connector. So. Um, jumping over to Studio here, you can see that within this project, I have the uh, POM file and I've already added that connector. So you can see here I'm using 1.0.7. Um, that's gonna correspond to the version um, that was built. So if we open up the POM file, the connector, I think I haven't updated this version yet, but this is 1.6, all right? Going back over to Studio, we're gonna close that file. Um, one little bug that I found with the connector and with kind of running in studio is related to a dependency that the connector relies on. So when you try to run the project for the first time without making this change, you're actually gonna get a build failure. And there is a issue with one of the dependencies here, um, Yidis, that's part of the Apache libraries, that has um, the version and system path missing for the JDK tools jar uh, library. So. The fix for that is pretty interesting. You're gonna actually go into your Maven repository into that specific dependency and open up the POM file for that dependency. And in here, what you need to do, you'll see is that they actually have the dependency listed twice. And for some reason that's causing the build of this uh, connector to bomb. So what you needed to go ahead and do, and it's actually pretty simple, is go ahead and delete this little snippet here, save the file. And when you run the project again, it's gonna go ahead, build it successfully, and then deploy it to, to the embedded meal runtime, okay? Okay, so now that the application's up and running, um, let's go ahead and look at the app and see what I built out here. So it's got two different flows. One is uh, the, to write the Avro file, and the other one's to read it. So 
The first one for the write, what we're gonna do is hard code the data that we're gonna write to the Avro file. You can see that it act, or to the Parquet file. And what you can see within data weave out of the box is that we can actually take data from any source and write that into an Avro format, application Avro. Uh, in order to write it to Avro, you need to also give it the schema for the, the data that, that, that you're ingesting and then you write, wanna write to that file. In this case, you can see here that I've defined the Avro format uh, for that file to be the username, the age of the user, the phone number, and then the house number, all right? Once, you, uh, once I've created this static data, I'm gonna go ahead and drop it into a payload. And then within the Parquet connector, I'm gonna take that payload and write it to the Parquet file um, located in the embedded meal runtime at the, at the app level, all right? It's also gonna compress it using the uncompressed format. And then the uh, other flow down here is gonna go ahead and read the file. So once it re receives a request from a browser to read, it's gonna go ahead and point to that Parquet file that I just created and then output that data in JSON data, all right? So let's go ahead and kick it off and actually see this in action. If we jump over to the browser and we go to localhost 8081 and we do a write, it's gonna go ahead and take that uh, hard-coded data in Avro format, write a Parquet file, and then also spit out the data in Avro to the browser screen, all right? And if we come over to the file system, you can see that here is a Parquet file that was generated. So let's go ahead and copy this, paste it to the desktop, and then um, I found this tool online. It's a online file viewer for Parquet. You can go ahead and choose a file. Uh, let's go ahead and open up that Parquet file. I'm gonna go ahead and show it as a table, say that I'm not a robot. And when I submit this file, the uh, site will go ahead and take the file and then output the data from the Parquet file into a table. And you can see that this is the, the, the data that we wrote to an Avro format and then wrote to the Parquet file, all right? And then for the other operation, right, this is gonna go ahead and read it from the local file store, in this case, test.parquet. So if we jump back over to the browser and we change this to read, it's gonna go ahead and take that file and then spit it back out in JSON format, all right? So as you can see, you know, using uh, the Mule SDK, this is a, a custom connector that allows you to easily read and write Parquet files. Um, if you have any questions, uh, go ahead and, and, and check out the, the projects within GitHub. If you have any questions, uh, don't hesitate to leave a, a comment below and I'll be ha happy to answer them.